Welcome everyone to the latest Coffee Break webinar by RIB Costex. My name is Francesca Nottingham and I'm a Costex consultant in RIB software. As you can see on screen, this month's topic is merging buildings. So within Costex you create a project and within that project you may have multiple buildings that you're working on which you would ultimately like to merge together. So we'll be looking at a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that in this month's webinar. For those of you who don't know what Costex is, or for those who have never used it, Costex is a fully integrated measuring and estimating solution with universal applications, supporting everything from hand-drawn sketches to PDFs, DWGs, all the way through to 3D models, BIM files, and everything in between. As we can see from this matrix, RIB Costex is available in a variety of licenses, ranging from offering all functionality to a fairly limited option, depending on your estimating requirements. Diving deeper into each functionality, let's look at the components, breaking down how each of them are cohesive with one another, bringing you an all-in-one service. You have your takeoff options to start with, whether you're using 3D, BIM or 2D drawings, Costex provides accurate data enabling you to utilise this data within your workbook. So our workbooks are just like Excel spreadsheets, but they are our own version. They still have the ability to use formulas and functions, making them very easy to navigate and use. We then have revisions tracking. Now this offers an accurate method of comparing a previous revision with a new one, giving you multiple ways to highlight, identify and quantify any changes, meaning you're always up to date with the latest cost implications. Once you've completed your estimate, you then have the opportunity to produce a report. Now we offer various standard report templates for you to use. Alternatively, you can customise your own report, producing a professional quality output. Don't forget to check out our previous webinar where we discuss measurement for cable installation works. You can find this via the link on screen or by visiting our RIB Costex YouTube channel where we upload our Coffee Break webinars and you can also subscribe so you can get notified of the latest videos and kept up to date with the newest features and how-to videos. So, this month's webinar, as previously mentioned, we will be demonstrating how to merge buildings. Let's look at why we would want to merge multiple buildings. We have a few different scenarios where this would need to be utilised, but an example would be if two users were working on the same project, but one of them has been working on a standalone licence, whilst the other has been working on a network licence. They now wish to merge the two in order to have the project up to date with the latest information. Or in the event that you are working on multiple buildings in one project, you may wish to merge the two in order to create an all-encompassing takeoff and workbook. So, are the drawings and workbooks within the building both merged? Yes, they are. This keeps all the information together as you may have live links between the dimension and workbook views. There are a couple of things to note. So before you have merged the buildings, you must know that you cannot split them once they're merged. So we would recommend keeping the individual or the separate building saved um, as well as saving this new merged one just in case you need to revert back. If there are any conflictions, i.e. with dimension group names or drawing names, these can be identified so there are no duplicates in the buildings, but you must select the correct setting in order to achieve this. If there are multiple revisions of the buildings, it must be identified which revision you wish to merge. So let's take a look at how to merge your buildings. So we're going to be merging two buildings in this webinar. This scenario is simulating merging two buildings from within the same project. So you may have an instance where multiple people have been working on two separate buildings within the same project, or you yourself have been working on two buildings and you wish to merge them so you can see the overall cost of a project. So I have already created a project called Merging Buildings and the two buildings I have been working on are Albany Apartments and 57 Beach Road. Firstly, I need to open the first building, which in this instance will say is Albany Apartments. So let's locate where that is. As you can see here in my recent buildings, I've got my uh, Merging Buildings project and my Albany Apartments building. So I'm going to double click this to open it. 
Now, a couple of things we need to note here. So when we merge the buildings, you cannot undo it. So I suggest you also keep the files of the separate buildings just in case you ever need to revert back to them. What we also need to remember is that records cannot have the same name. So dimension groups, uh, if you have two, two dimension groups with the same name, they will either be merged or conflicted. If there is a conflict, COSTEX will give you the opportunity to choose the course of action. This applies for dimension groups and drawings. So now that I've got the first building open, uh, we'll go to our dimension view and we can see we've got a couple of drawings here. We've also got some dimension groups, which if I expand these, you can see have already been populated, um, already done a takeoff and the quantity has already been gathered. In my workbook view, I've already got a workbook that I've worked on. Uh, with information pulled across from my dimension group, so it's already pre-populated. So now what I wish to do is locate and merge my other building, which is within the same project, uh, into this one. So I'll now go to my file option in the ribbon up here. I'll then select merge. And as you can see, I've got two buttons available to me. I've got merge building from database, which is what we're going to be using because as we saw from my browser window earlier, I've already got my merging building project and I've already been working on 57 Beach Road. So it's already within the database. You may have an instance where you need to merge a building from EXF. This might be used if you have received an exported uh, building, which is now an EXF file, which you need to bring in. Um, or if for whatever reason it's just not already on the database. So if you were to select this, it would take you to your file explorer and you just have to locate that exported building. So because we're using the top one, I'm going to click it and it will show you what we saw before. So I've already got my merging buildings project and I've got 57 Beach Road here. So I'm going to select this one. So now what it's doing is asking me which revision from the source to merge into this building. So as you go through a project, often um, further down the line, you might have multiple revisions. In this case, I've only got one, so it's only giving me one to choose from, but you would uh, probably have a list here of all the different revisions that you'd gone through on that building. So I'm just gonna select yes. What we've got now is select the revision of this building to merge into. So same again, um, it's only got the initial revision, so that's easy enough to select. Just as a note with the revisions, if the revision you've chosen to merge into is not the latest revision, the merge will irreversibly change the old revision as subsequent revisions. Um, this is not ideal if revisions are being used as an audit trail, just as a, a note. So now that I selected which revisions uh, to merge into, I've now got a merge options dialog window here. So this is saying that merging with the same building twice will lead to duplication of dimensions and is not recommended. This is what we've been discussing before. So you've got the option here to merge like drawings and merge like dimension groups. Um, if these are ticked, then it will save any duplications. Um, if they are unticked, then you would potentially end up with double your information. Uh, so it depends on, on what you're after. In this instance, we're going to keep these checked because I don't want any duplicates. I want them just to merge um, all the drawings and all the dimension groups. So I'm going to select OK. So we've now got a warning telling us that a couple of things, uh, there were a couple of conflicts. So it's saying the following objects from 57 Beach Road, which is building B in our case, were renamed. So dimension groups UCA changed to UCA2 and it's telling us which project or which building that's coming from. And then we've got FECA changed to FECA2, and then again, it's coming from the new building. It's also just giving us a warning that the GFA has changed from 6277 to 6630. Um, and this is all OK, so I'm going to select OK. So as we can see now, we've got, so we're in our workbook view. We've got two workbooks now. Um, so the original one, which was Elemental Cost Plan, and then we've got this new one, which is 02 Elemental Units. Um, 
if I go to my dimension view, I've now got a couple more drawings and the original three down there. Um, and as you can see, I've got some more dimension groups as well. So there is a situation here where you may actually want to alter this slightly. Um, so as you can see, I've got 00, zero areas GFA up here, which if I open, that gives us the FECA2 and UCA2, which is what the, the conflict warning was about. You might actually want those moved into your original folder, um, so to not sort of duplicate the folders. So in this case, you can actually change which folder these are in. So if I right click this uh, group, my dimension group here, I can say change folder. And now I can either type in a new folder or I can search for the one I want to move it to. So I want to move it to 00GFA and select OK. And as you can see in that folder, I've now got my two FECAs, one referencing one project um, and then the original there as well. So I'm just going to do the same with my UCA2, change the folder. And now what that's done is actually delete that um, other folder because there was no information left in it. So now all of your areas um, are in the same folder, which just makes it a bit neater. Um, something else you can do as well, which uh, also tidies things up a bit, is you can actually put your drawings into different folders. So what I'm going to do is create a folder for 57 Beach Road, and I'm also going to create a folder for Albany Apartments. So to do this, all I have to do is just either double click on the drawing, or I can actually go into my drawing properties in here. So this now gives me an option to um, either use a folder that's already there, which as we can see isn't, or create a new one. So this time I'm just going to put in 57 Beach Road and then update. And then as you can see, it's created a folder and put that drawing in. So I'm just going to do the same one for this site plan here just to make it a bit neater because it's already created. I can just go to my drop down, press update. And then I'm just going to do the same for these three. So if I select one of them and double click, I'm going to create a new folder now. And this one's going to be called Albany Apartments. And then I'll just keep going till that's neatened up. Okay, so now I've got my two folders, making it easier for me to navigate around the drawings. And now I've also tidied up any conflicts that I had um, and put them in the same folder or in a folder that I wanted them in. So now that we've had a look at our dimension view, let's have a look at what this has done to our workbook view. So let's go back into our workbooks. So we've already seen that we've got the two workbooks now, so the original being the elemental cost plan and the new one being 0 to elemental units. So because these are named two different things, it didn't present any conflicts when you merged the building. So it's important when you are creating the files separately that you name them something different to avoid the conflict happening. Ideally, if you know that you're going to be merging, it might be an idea to name these with the building name in them as well so that you can easily navigate between the two. So now if you would like to have a combined total, you can go to your workbook values and pull across a amount which you wish to combine with the original amount. So for example, I've got uh, in the current workbook, so 0 to elemental units, I've got my 770 total. What I can do is pull across my elemental cost plan total, pop it in the subtotal column, and now because that's green, that's live linked to um, that workbook. So if I were to change anything in here, this would automatically be updated. You can give it a name um, such as um, 
elemental cost plan um, and then the building name which in this case would have been Albany Apartments um, and then you've obviously got that reference point to see exactly what that's telling us um, as you can see, our new total is encompassing everything. So the 770 plus the 15 million. Um, and again, over here, we've got the total as well. So once you're happy that you've merged everything you wanted to merge, um, you can export this. So you can head to file and export um, and you can export the project um, or export the buildings um, and yeah, save it in a place that can be accessed by everybody who's working on the project. Um, alternatively, you can just save it where you'd allocated saving these buildings in the first instance. Um, you just, when you are saving or exporting, you just want to make it identifiable as the merged file. As you can see up here, it's given me the original building name as the actual building rather than updating to a merged version. So just as a note to round off this webinar, you're not limited with what you can merge in terms of format. So if you have a couple of buildings with different drawing formats in, i.e. if one building has 2D drawings in and the other has BIM models or other 3D drawings, then these can be merged with no issue. Still taking into account the conflicting mechanics of COSEX, you just decide what happens to the items that are duplicated. So this concludes the Merging Buildings Coffee Break webinar for this month. I hope you found this webinar useful and feel free to enter comments against this if you have any questions. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel to give you more tips and tricks to use our software and updates on the latest versions and features. Come back next month to check out our webinar where we will be demonstrating the use of functions of zones. See you next time.